Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. In today's episode, I'm going to be covering all the relevant updates from Microsoft in August of 2021. If you've watched my previous update videos, you know I filter through the 100 or so announcements that they come out with each month. And I go and I pick out the ones that are relevant to the MSP space so you guys can be more proactive with your end users. Before I get to today's video, if you do want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting into it here, we're going to start off with Microsoft Teams, Teams where they make the most changes month over month. First one here we have is paging in large gallery. If you've been experiencing the large gallery, you've been exposed to the 49 videos like you see below here. They're adding pagination to this so that you can see up to 98. In the large gallery view, this actually should probably already be available to you if you're leveraging that preview feature. The video gallery mode, which is basically just your normal mode where you have a 3x3 three three grid of users who are sharing, will support this as well too. So you can paginate over and you can see up to 98 videos, and that'll be in mid-September. Next here, they're introducing background effects on the web. Pretty straightforward. Basically, this feature did not exist, but in the client version. So now on the web, you can share your background effects, like being able to blur or add custom backgrounds and things like that. That'll happen in mid-August and be complete by late August so that by the time you are seeing this video, it may have already occurred. The next one we want to touch on here is more related to compliance. This is saying Teams meeting recordings have an auto expiration policy in OneDrive and SharePoint of 60 days. So this is something that you may want to take a look at in more detail if you want to set a default that's outside of the 60 day range. This is not going to be retroactive in that it's not going to take all your stream videos that are 60 days old and just immediately expire them. It will be on new recordings when this actually goes into production. It is an announcement that has many asterisks in the case of granular details like being able to restore it from a recycle bin and things of that nature. So I definitely take a look at the PDF that I'll link below here as well too. That has a lot more detail on each of these announcements. The next two I'll be covering here around breakout rooms. This first one here is allowing you to pre-configure the breakout rooms before you actually enter the meeting. This is allowing you to do things like room creation and participant assignment right from within the Teams app without actually having to do that from launching the meeting and then doing that uh, afterwards. So this will happen in mid-September, be complete by late September. Other one here for breakout rooms is presenter support. So traditionally, as the organizer, you are the only one who could manage the breakout rooms and the participants within them. Now you can delegate that task to more of the presenters and they can decide who is in these rooms as well too. So this will happen mid-September and it'll be complete by late September. These next two here are only applicable if you're using the VoIP PSTN services with Microsoft Teams, both related to the phone services here. So Dynamic E911 for US work from home users is giving you the ability to dynamically assign their current location as their emergency 911 address within their Teams environment. This is something that traditionally you've done within the Teams Admin Center, and in this case, it's going to ask the user for their consent to grab their location and then store that dynamically for everybody that's working from home. The thing to note with this one that I would just touch on is not available for business voice users. It's only for the enterprise label plans, like people who are using E3, phone system, PSD and calling, things like that. Spam notification and call toast is something that should already actually be available to you by the time you're watching this video. It's basically detecting more of the spam calls you would get, giving you this notification that you see below. Last one here for Microsoft Teams, they're pairing the naming convention between Teams channels and corresponding SharePoint folders. So this is to say if you were to update the name of the Teams channel, the folder within SharePoint would update as well too. I wanted to bring this one up just because you could have some broken links potentially from this renaming convention. This is something that's going to happen on all net new Teams channels that are created after this goes into production. So it won't be retroactive, but just note that while it's great that it's renaming that and having uh, the correspondence between the Teams channel and SharePoint site, you could have shared out some files within that folder and potentially those users would have broken links if they're storing them locally. So just keep that in mind. This will happen mid-September through mid-October. Getting into the admin section here, this first one, you have the ability to assign roles to Azure AD groups. That's now generally available. Previously, you were only able to do that on an individual user basis. Now this allows you to do things like being able to assign the user administrator role to a group of people versus one at a time, for instance. Just note that this is only available for Azure AD P1 or P2 subscriptions. So if you don't have that, that won't be available for you. 
The next one here, they're announcing automatic redirection from the Office 365 Security Compliance Center to Microsoft 365 Defender Portal. Microsoft's recently unified all of these management portals for a variety of their services, including Defender for Endpoint, Defender for Identity, Defender for Office 365, and Cloud App Security into this unified 365 Defender Portal. And now they're going to start redirecting you from the legacy 365 Security and Compliance Center, which a lot of you may be working out of, automatically by default. So just know that that will happen. You do have the ability to stop that redirection if you want. And I'll link that below as well, too, in the PDF that I'll have with more detail here. But I would get familiar with this portal because it is a lot more powerful. It does consolidate everything a little bit better. But it's just a learning curve, right, from what you're used to within the Security and Compliance Center. The final one we're going to talk about here is end of support for Azure AD Graph. This is something that will happen on June 30th of 2022. That isn't something necessarily that I feel like would affect a lot of people, but as you'll note here, it's also affecting the MS Online commandlets, in particular, the ones that you see down below for setting a user license or creating a new user and assigning them a license at the same time, which may be in a lot of your scripts that you use today, or some of the automation capabilities when you think about user change management. So just pay attention to that. Obviously, we have some time here before this goes end of life and those will stop working. So I get familiar with the command lists that are going to replace them and start to make sure that you don't have automation tasks running behind the scenes that are leveraging those command lists in the future. That's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in today's video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned, like or subscribe if you want to see more content on Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.